Hi everyone, this is Elena Alsru. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so glad that you decided to watch my video. I hope it can be helpful to you guys and encourage you guys during this really um, intense, crazy time. Everybody is going through the same thing, but we're all having individual experiences. And so what I wanna do is kind of speak to the things that this pandemic is assaulting in our day-to-day -day life and in our internal world and space. Brian just put out an amazing video and offered a six-week program. And so what I'm trying to do is kind of go on the coattails of that and share with you guys from a mental health perspective and emotional perspective what this type of crisis is doing for you on the inside maybe why you're not thinking really clearly why you're not quite sure to do with yourself and your time and some um, maybe some fear and anxiety and unknown uh, for the future a lot of loss going on a lot of grieving a lot of everybody's having a different reaction so I wanted to be able to normalize a lot of what you're going through and give you some steps in order to help you guys walk through this time as a better person and also not alone. <clears throat> so the first thing I wanted to share is that this pandemic has disrupted so many areas of our lives and I narrowed them down to five areas. And the first area that it disrupts is our sense of connection. So I've been listening to a ton of podcasts and a lot of teachings of people that I really admire this week and I'm taking a lot of my information from Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. Caroline Leaf and I wanted to be able to let you guys know that up front that I'm going to be listing their information in the show notes and be able to share with you guys from my perspective how it affects you know kind of what they're saying and kind of translate it into a way that maybe you guys can understand. So where I wanted to start was just to be able to identify the five areas that this virus and experience is assaulting in our own lives both individually and globally. The first thing that it's assaulting is connectedness. We all have a sense of community in different ways and forms. It, you guys may be seeing people at the gym regularly. Maybe some of you are going to church. Some of you regularly gather with your families and it's kind of nothing to be able to go hang out with a bunch of people, go to a movie, go to the restaurant, but now we're not able to do that. It's actually a risk, right? So it's almost like the opposite of what we're used to. Connectedness is the first thing and it's kind of like if we're building a house connectedness is the foundation it is so important it's where love is so that sense of feeling loved and cared about valued known accepted that is at risk for being taken away so we're going to talk a little bit later about how to keep that in your life while you're not physically able to connect with people okay so the second thing that this virus this time period this pandemic assault is your sense of structure this is so important guys and it's something that I've realized this week I've, I don't know about you but I found myself a little bit aimless sometimes I have a lot to do but uh, you know what happened to my sense of structure I usually go to work I get my coffee I go to the gym I make dinner you know all these things usually have a routine and an order and now they don't and so what I need to do is figure out how to get some of that back you know structure are, is like the walls of the house it's keeping everything in it's giving us a boundary and in that boundary we can feel so safe because we know what to expect and what's gonna come next it's like a sense of sameness um, and so I wanted you guys to be able to know that that is something, if you're experiencing that weird feeling of, oh, I feel like I don't have a routine, that is normal. That is extremely normal. So that's one thing that this has affected. So the third thing that this has affected, and you guys may be feeling this big time, is a sense of control. You know, we don't have control over this. We don't have control over if you're gonna get sick. You don't have control how many people are sick. We didn't have control how it started. There's so many things outside of our control. You know, we are told to close the gym. Outside of our control and when it reopens, again, outside of our control in my life. So it is so important to be able to recognize that and, and kind of list, you know, hey, acknowledge it you know acknowledge it we'll talk about what to do how to address that later but I did want to say one of the things that we are meant to, to control is ourselves and that is one way to be able to regain a sense of control and feel a lot better so we'll go into that a little bit later the fourth thing that that is assaulted in our <clears throat> like experience with this COVID-19 this pandemic is our brains our brains are constantly under attack right now about about so many different things. What's gonna happen? Where, how am I gonna make my money? Where's What about the food? What about the toilet paper? I still haven't found any toilet paper. Thank God I have a little bit, like maybe six rolls left, hopefully. <laughs> um, but you know, like 
all these things that maybe we weren't concerned about before we're concerned about now and we're a little bit in that fight or flight mode and so your brain is getting attacked and what we're, it's doing and I'll explain a little bit about this later but it's kind of constantly in a trauma place which is actually not healthy it's in crisis mode it's in that fight or flight it's you know you're kind of redlining on uh, adrenaline and cortisol and all those stress hormones that are actually create inflammation in your your body system and harder to fight infection so it's very that panic is not healthy for um, fighting off infection and staying extremely stable and healthy so we're going to talk a lot about more what is going on there and how can we calm that down Okay, so the last thing is interesting. It is a sense of competency. I don't know about you, but a couple days this week, I kind of felt like, you know, unless you're an essential personnel right now, you know, I feel like I'm not doing my job well, um, or I'm not able to help people the way I've been able to in the past. So there's a sense of competency and confidence, like I matter, you know, and it does seem a little bit weird but if you really look into it it could begin to creep up with some of you um finding that does my work matter does my efforts matter am i able to help people so we're going to talk a little bit about how that affects us and how we fit into a bigger story so now what i'm going to do is be able to break down each of these five things share with you guys a little bit more in depth about each of them and what we can practice practically do to be able to help you begin to regain a sense of control and structure and be able to know what to do in your daily life when you start feeling out of control. I'm going to provide you some tools, some resources, and these are things that I myself am doing and they are already helping. So the first thing that I wanted to do was break down the fact that we are being assaulted in our connectedness. Connectedness is so important. We're giving and receiving love. We're helping people feel cared, valued, and known. So what you want to make sure of is when you are feeling like isolated from your daily life and daily routine, you don't need to be isolated from the people that you love. So there's so many creative ways to be able to keep in touch with those who love you. And so what I want you to be able to do is take a moment and just be able to think of a couple people who really care about you and remember that empathy is such an important part of this. It's super important not to judge each other for our reactions to the situation. As you can see in the world, people being extremely selfish and extremely judgmental is not helping with the spread of panic. So what you want to do is be able to think of, I would say, three people who care about you, love you, accept you no matter what, and can provide you with empathy. And make sure that you're that person for somebody else. Um, giving to others is going to be a huge part of you feeling better and making it through this time this season of time um, and grow in the middle of it so um, for example what I did this week is I thought of those people who really could I could receive life from I set up phone dates with them or FaceTime dates and like maybe like one each day of the week or one four days of the week and I kept those dates I you know I reached out to those people I kept those phone dates maybe they were a half an hour maybe they're 15 minutes maybe they're 45 minutes but they helped me feel connected to people if you're someone who really needs to see that person's face ask them if they're willing to do FaceTime or Zoom or Google Duo. Um, uh, one of my connections was with my little nephew and my sister and I got to just kind of be with them while they're doing their dinner time. That helped me feel like I was in their space, in their world, and they got to see me chopping onions, hear my dogs go crazy when someone walked by. That was a way to feel connected. And I will say that I feel like those are some of the top things that I did this week. Talking to a friend that I hadn't talked to for a long time, a mentor. I kind of shows different people and it may be different next week um, but it's a way to stay connected with others and they're giving life to me I'm giving life to them we're we're talking about what's going on you know super important also next to be able to talk about your feelings about what is going on in your personal world be able to name your feelings you know with a safe person someone who's giving you empathy someone who can just listen and not you know compare experiences and tell you what to do or how to think like you need to be able to be with somebody and say i am super confused about why this is happening i am super scared that you know my husband's gonna get sick and he already has lung issues or whatever or I'm so sad because my brother has had to you know lay off some people or my friend has had to lay off some people you know the empathy I'm just so I feel bad and so being able to say all those things out loud naming your emotions is so important because what you're doing is you're taking them kind of out of your brain and putting them out into space and then what they're someone else is doing who cares about you is taking them in 
listening it kind of diffuses them a little bit but also validates you in that hey yeah your feelings they make sense they make sense you make sense it's going to be okay we're in this together so empathy and a, and a good listening ear is so important to be able to name these things because if you don't name them and you don't accept what's going on we're gonna live in a state of denial and then we're not gonna be in reality anymore we're gonna be fighting against this thing and guess what it's gonna get worse and worse and worse we're gonna get more mad more depressed more anxious and it's gonna add to the panic and add to you not ending up in a good place when this is kind of passed through its peak time. So it's very important to have, so what, what I just said was be able to have at least three empathetic people in your life, structure connection with them throughout the week. Again, not physically necessarily. If it is physical and you're staying, you know, super far apart, but really we all should be quarantined. So make sure you set those times up with people who love you and care about you and tell them how you're really doing. Don't lie. <laughs> they can handle it. Um, and so that's really important. And then be able to, you know, name those emotions, get them out, accept them. You know, you're they're being accepted. And then if you need to grieve anything, it's a time to grieve. It's, you know, I'm really sad that I miss my, my you know, brother's you know, going to have a baby or this wedding that I was going to go to is canceled or my wedding is canceled, not mine, but you know, so there's so many losses going on right now. Losses of jobs, losses of safety, losses of health, you know, worry, there's loss of feeling okay. Right. So being able to grieve losses in real time. And one of the only ways to do that is with somebody else and then accepting it becomes a little bit easier and we're not in denial. And so then we're living in reality, but we're not when we have somebody else with us. And so I just wanted to kind of put all that out there and say that this is something really important. And I'd like you to be able to take the time to write down those people, write down those structured connections times. Hey, these could even be within your own family. I think it's a wonder Brian and I have created a tradition where we're going to, you know, starting our night an hour earlier, we're still making dinner. I'm making dinner the way that I normally do. And then we're putting on like a movie or a funny show or just something that, <coughs> excuse me, is not coronavirus related or coronavirus related. And we're just kind of acting like, you know, we know things are going on, but we're trying to keep a normal routine. And I know families who are doing game nights or doing like Google video calls at night with a family member. And so create that connectedness even in your own home. So those are just some thoughts for what to do to stay connected to others. I know so many I'm plugging into online church. A couple different churches are really trying to provide encouragement. So if you're not someone who normally attends church, maybe you'd be willing to watch one online. I'll list some of the ones that I think are really helpful um, and provide a lot of hope. And that's what we're all looking for is hope right now and to know that you are not alone. So again, so many uh, people are doing Facebook live groups. There's so many different ways to stay connected. Um, one of the cool ways that I love that Brian did was he wrote a six week program and we can all do it together. <laughs> I'm going to be doing it starting Monday. So if you want to feel connected, just know, let me know your progress. Write me a little note, DM me on Instagram. I'm gonna try to be sharing, sharing as much as possible. Um, and that's a way to feel connected. So again, there are a lot of ways, but those are just a few I wanted to list. Um, making sure you're connecting with an empathetic person. Uh, the, the structure of connection is really important, making sure you're setting it up and following through with that and creating, um, you know, also being that empathetic person to somebody else. So it's so important to stay connected to others because it's the foundation of feeling okay. Number two, structure. This one will not be as long as the last one. So structure is so important. So many of us have felt a little bit disoriented. I know I did a little Instagram post about it about a week and a half ago, how I felt like I was in a dream. And I really did because what was going on was my brain was really trying to worry into what in the heck was happening. What is going on in my life is getting turned upside down and so are the lives of everyone I love, right? So structure and routine is crucial to be able to have because what it's gonna do is create a sense of safety and a sense of calm, just like the, the four walls of a house. It's gonna contain you on the inside to help you be able to be free in that space because you know what to expect. 
when you know for example a child who say you have, you have a child and their school closes right so that kid is used to i'm going to get get up i'm going to get my breakfast i'm going to get on the bus i'm going to go to school i'm going to learn and see these people oh yeah i really like having lunch with billy he's a lot of fun um then i'm going to come home and i'm going to have a hug from my mom and then i'm going to have a cookie and then i'm going to watch a show and then i'm going to play eat dinner do homework go to bed Okay, that is destroyed <laughs> right now because there's no school. So just like a child, we all have similar routines, right? So we get up, we do different things. We're used to saying hi to some, you know, somebody who's not related to us. We're used to maybe saying hi to the coffee barista. You're used to seeing the people that you work with at your gym. I know it's so weird to me because I'm, you know, seeing the same people three to four days a week for like five plus years. My routine's totally, you know, it's upside down. So what I want to do is try to help you guys regain a sense of structure and routine in your day. And what that's going to do is decrease anxiety and decrease panic because you're going to know what to expect and you're going to be able to take your time with it. We can break that down into a couple different things. So, you know, and here's some ideas of things that should be in your routine. Uh, a wake up time and you should probably try to stick to that. This is a great opportunity if you've been bad about eating breakfast or planning your meals. Hey, what a great opportunity to refocus and restructure and begin to eat really healthy, nutritious meals and structure them a couple times a day. I'm going to get up. I'm going to make eggs. I'm going to eat the eggs. I'm going to feel good about it. I'm going to drink water. I'm going to take some vitamin C and then I'm going to make sure you know that for me okay so i'm gonna eat breakfast and i'm gonna start working i'm going to do a portion of my day is going to be output work where i'm helping clients serving clients setting up appointments doing those kind of things and then the other part of my day is going to be input i'm going to be learning i'm going to be receiving information to help me do my job better then after that what i'm going to do is i'm going to move i am going to you know i'm going to be doing the never state program <laughs> six week body weight program but if you want to do some running yoga whatever it is that helps you feel like you moved and sweat i definitely think sweating is a very important part of this because it's getting toxins out of your body another way to help with immunity right so then you're sweating say it's for 45 minutes okay then you come back in maybe you do a couple household things you take a shower and then you start making dinner and you start getting ready for the evening to close and maybe your evening just closes a little earlier than normal um within that time you would have had maybe a structured connection with a friend so you're getting some emo emotional connectedness so we're getting some healthy food we're working we're serving others and then we're taking time to do physical activity we're stimulating our brains and then uh, some other things you could do is you could do some creative work so hey i want to learn to create or i want to learn to do a new hobby or a new skill. So you just put that in your structure and routine. Um, hey, I want to be able to do something kind for somebody else. Yeah, let's do it. Let's schedule in community connectedness, serving time, volunteer time, however you can do that in a safe way according to the guidelines. So there's so many things you could actually do in a day, but setting them up beforehand, I have to do it the night before so I don't wake up confused. <laughs> um, I will tend to be distracted easily. So what I need to do is have in my head a, a kind of what my next day is gonna look like and then review it when I get up in the morning. For me, I have to start my day off with something really positive. Usually it's um, a, a devotional, like a faith-based devotional, really helps me center my mind. And then I go on throughout my day. Uh, Brian and I have a coffee time, we talk, you know, we let the dogs out. So there's routine that you do have in your life. You just want to kind of make sure that you can see it and begin to expect it and be okay with it. So what I'm going to do is the structure and routine are such important parts of helping reduce anxiety and help you be able to take one day at a time and be able to perform your tasks and feel healthy and connected to others. Okay, so another way that we are assaulted with this pandemic is control. The sense of control um, is gone, right? There are so many things in this situation we cannot control and we are all equal with that. But one of the ways that I wanna help you guys understand control <laughs> is we were, we're never in control of those big things of viruses and pandemics and if someone's going to pull out and hit me in my car on my way to the store or what's going to happen to so many people I love, right? We're really not in control of those things. But what we are in control of is ourself. So one of the most important ways to combat what is going on in our world is to be able to take the things, I would highly suggest this, making a list of to, you know what I can control what I can't control and list all the things that you cannot control 
Put them all down. Get them out of your head. Get them onto paper. They will take up space in your brain and kill your energy, zap your energy, but they need to be down. And then I want you to list all the things that you can control. I'm going to say definitely do that. This is an exercise I want you to be able to do. So when you write down all the things you can't control, then what we've done is put them in a contained space. And there's some really good techniques to be able to do that, even with visualization. One of the exercises I do with a lot of my clients is something called container. It is a positive resourcing technique. And all that means is it allows you to get more from a stressed out state space into more of a neutral space by taking the things you cannot control, kind of, kind of putting them together visually, putting them in a box or a lock box or a safe, getting them in there, containing them, locking it down, putting them in that space, and then putting that space somewhere, that container locked somewhere else so that when it's your time to worry, because you're gonna get to have a worry time, you bring it back out and then you worry for like 10 minutes and then it gets to go back away. Um, so there's a bunch of different techniques, but what it's called is bracketing, and what that is is just it, it's all in a contained space. So that is such an important part of writing down what you can't control. Like for me, I cannot control when we're going to reopen our gym. I cannot control when I get to see clients again in person. Well, I guess I could, but it's not super smart. I, I like, I'm doing telehealth right now with my clients. A lot of mental health professionals are still practicing in person, which is totally cool. I just don't have the cleaning supplies to be able to maintain that for a long period of time because everyone took the hand sanitizer. <laughs> um, so, you know, I can't control if my family gets sick. You know, all I can do is make sure I'm clean and help people where I can. So I can't control when this is all going to stop. I didn't go to school to become a scientist so I can't really be active in that process um, it is an idea but I can't so there's a lot of things I can't control right my financial income I you know I'm trying to do different things but I can't control everything right now because this is such a strange situation but what I can control is my attitude <clears throat> I can control how I treat people I can control my thoughts I can I can control um, how I am keeping myself clean and making sure that I'm sanitizing as much as I can according to the guidelines. I can control going on and looking at information that's new every day and learning about it. I can control um, the, the attitude of my house, how the house is at peace. I can control my workouts. I can control what I put in my mouth. I can control a lot of things. And so what it becomes is a self-discipline approach, a self-control approach, which the more you feel in control of yourself, the more you feel a sense of control. And it feels great. You know, if I go through my day and I've done my workout, I ate really clean, I did good work helping people, um, I talked to a friend and it was a really good conversation, I read a really good book, heard a good podcast, had good interactions with Brian, um, made a healthy dinner, got a good night's sleep, like, man, that is a good day, whether there's a pandemic in the world or there's not. So that, that is what I can control. So. I would encourage you guys to make lists of that and then get to work on what you can control and then have a time where you do worry about the things that are out on that I don't have control list. Talk to a person who is empathetic, right? That's where that empathetic person comes in. And then it's important to visualize putting that into a container that can hold it and putting it in a storage place that's super safe and then bringing it back out. So this is all a visualization. I might be able to put up a video of me going through a visualization. It's a lot of meditation options out there where you can imagine yourself in a peaceful place, things like that. But again, we're going to talk about what you can control, but also what can you can control in your mind. Okay, so the next one that I wanted to talk about is that the pandemic has totally assaulted our brains. We are all kind of in a, instead of PTSD, it's like present PTSD, <laughs> um, present SD, where we're kind of all going through a trauma right now. And if your brain feels confused, it's because it is. It's trying to figure out how do I keep my cortisol and adrenaline levels down and balance, keep the ratios intact, be able to not act from a flight or fright, a fright perspective, but be able to maintain a strong, working, good decision-making mindset in the prefrontal cortex. So we're fighting against biology here, trying to keep us all calm. And what I want to do is give you guys some ways to be able to not be one of those people who is taken over by panic. The fear of the disease is almost worse than the disease itself because when you 
panic and you feel you have so much fear that's clouding your brain and causing all these levels to go up it's causing inflammation in your body and the more time you spend in panic mode the more time the more sick you're going to get honestly so if you want to keep your immune system good what you're going to do is be able to learn how to do some calming techniques to help your body stay calm now you have reason to fear right there's a lot going on especially if you're a central personnel and they're saying hey you know you don't have we don't have enough supplies for you or you need to go talk to this person or do this job that we you don't remember how to do it's a lot of stuff or hey you know don't come to work tomorrow we can't pay you whoa these are big <coughs> big deals i am not making light of them but what i am saying is it is in, in your best interest to learn how to calm your body down and control your mind in order to keep your immunity high which is extremely important because what happens when you, your body and brain go into panic mode, your oxygen levels go down, blood vessels constrict, you're not able to get oxygen to all of your body and your brain to be able to function correctly and make a decision. So be making panicky decisions, um, locking your keys in the car, forgetting to do different things, you know, losing things. There's all kinds of things that happen when we're going from a flight, fright, or freeze state. Learn how to calm your body down and get oxygen into your brain. And one of the, my favorite ways to do that is box breathing. Um, what that is, is and once you realize you're going through this, and one way that I want to empower you is to realize that the brain and the mind are two separate things, right? So the brain is all the biology and your mind is your ability to step outside of your brain and observe your thoughts. So we do have the ability to do that if we slow down enough and know that and practice that understanding where, okay, all this is happening, but how am I, how am I handling it? What is the perspective of my thoughts? Do I truly believe that something terrible is going to happen to me right now? Or can I take a step back and, and observe? What is reality? What's going on? What can I do? How can I change and interrupt <clears throat> my negative thought process and regain some perspective here so that I can get through the next moment and be okay? So what I'm going to do is just model real quick some box breathing. It's when you breathe in for four counts, hold for four counts, and then exhale for four counts. So breathing in, hold, exhale, Breathing in, hold, and exhale. So that is a box breathe exercise. I recommend that you do that until you calm down. Um, you can take your pulse. A lot of people will get anxiety and tightness in their chest, so you can even keep your hand on your chest as you do this and begin to notice your body calm down, and you will feel so much better. Um, and then once you calm down, you'll be able to regain some perspective because you're in a more of a calm state. Um, another thing you can do is um, engaging in mindfulness exercises. There's so many of them. There's meditation apps. There's meditation. There's yoga. There, you know, you can read devotionals. You can just be engaging in things to help slow your body down, like calming music, calming smells like lavender, peppermints, eucalyptus. Also, just making sure that you are only talking and limiting your um, news information, having input times where you're receiving that information will also keep you calm and not all heightened all day long. So these things are really important. And one of the things I wanted to recommend to you, because I think that this is one of the most vital pieces to be able to combat what is going on here. And in order to not keep your brain in a stressed state because if it stays in a stressed state it's going to cause a lot more chaos but you have the ability to observe your own thoughts and see what you're doing when you're doing it and um, i'm going to recommend dr leaf's switch app it is and her information and in her books are great because what they do is help educate you and help you understand the power you have over your thoughts and the switch app is i think she i'm just going to start it too on monday so i'm doing a bunch of things starting monday um to help me feel more in control and feel like i'm doing all the right things i know how to do to help myself move through this time period and grow from it and help others because you got to put the mask on yourself before you can help others and i know that i need to do that um, so the switch app, I'm going to put the information down in the page um, when so you guys can see it, you can access it, and maybe you can start it too. But it's kind of like 
cognitive behavioral therapy on steroids. It's neuroscience based. It's really helpful and I think she does an incredible job. So she is a resource for that. Um, I also think, you know, if you've listened to any of Brian's videos, he has been kind of preaching a lot of this for a long time as far as being able to become more in control when your body thinks it's going into a, a crisis mode. Um, so watch some of his videos. Uh, they're really helpful. Check out the program. Maybe it would be helpful to you to have that. It might help calm you down, add some st structure to your day. Um, but it's so important to be in control of your mind or else it could cause a lot of chaos which can be brain damage and a lot of inflammation is not good for your immunity so this is vital if you're not taking that seriously uh, i highly recommend it if you have any questions please feel free to leave them down below um and so the last thing that i wanted to talk to you guys about is how we lose our sense of competency and how it's important to be able to regain that and feel a little bit better about ourselves right so there's a lot of people not going to work right now um, because their skills aren't um, needed in the situation, but really because we just can't come in contact with each other, right? So there's a lot of people who are used to connecting and, and helping people that can, and that is really hard, right? And so what I want you to do is remember this. Remember you're part of a bigger story. You're part of a bigger plan and play the narrative out of what's going to happen. Um, and also recalling times where you were able to help people, you were competent, you were able to give of what you've been given and help others. And that will also help you. But even more than that, what's going to be most helpful is being able to, there's a video Brian did called the tick mark video, I think, and it's about making small incremental goals. And this is something that's so helpful when you feel like you're not getting anything done or you're kind of in like the white space, you know, where you're like, oh, what am I going to do with my time? I can't even do anything. Like I felt that a little bit this week. You know, um, I really respect all of our essential personnel right now. And I was kind of almost like feeling bad that I wasn't, you know, out there or whatever, like on the front lines. And you know what? I really realized that I'm not made to, I didn't go to school to do that, right? I went to school to help equip those people and to support them. And so I want to really embrace my role. One of the reasons why I'm making this video, I know this video is not my best, but I'm just trying to give the information that I do have to help the people that I really care about. And because you guys are the ones that are going to help bring an end to this. Um, and help to calm panic. So making small incremental goals in your day, like I mean, small goals for myself, I'm going to do you know physical activity I'm going to call someone I love I'm going to clean the house I'm going to purge my things that I don't need I'm going to clean I'm going to encourage someone um, and I'm gonna have a good attitude about it <laughs> I'm gonna read a book you know making these small goals and being able to check them off has felt really good or doing things that you have been meaning to do for a really long time and completing them and that does give a sense of satisfaction so what we're looking for here is senses of satisfaction and hope that if we do one day at a time and accomplish what we need to today there's going to be a tomorrow and it's going to be okay you're going to be able to go back and find some type of work you're going to be able to help the people you need to help it's going to be okay everyone is going through this you are not alone so those are some things that I really wanted to share with you guys to help you move through this time. Now, I, a lot of the information I've gotten have, has been from Dr. Henry Cloud, someone I truly respect, and I think he has such a great attitude and perspective on helping people. Um, and one of the other things I wanted to say about knowing that you're in a bigger story is, for me, I come from a background of faith and, and um, some people may not see things the way that I do and that's okay. I just wanted to say what's helping me personally have hope during a hard time is knowing that I'm not alone, that I have a God who does love me and that in the valleys, the low points of my life, you know, and the high points of my life, he is there and he one he's going to be the one that gives me hope and purpose and is not going to abandon me during this time. Even if I get sick, I'm still going to believe that. Um, I'm still going to know that and it's still going to bring me comfort. Someone I love gets sick. I'm still going to believe that and it's still going to give me comfort. And that's how I can remain in a hopeful place. And I hope that, you know, this is true for me as I move forward here. But one of the things I've been reading is Psalm 91. It talks a lot about how we are protected and um, even through disease and things like that. So if you're new to new to a faith or spirituality or anything like that um there's a 
an app called U Version. Sorry, U Version. I have a really good friend who works for Life Church, and the U Version Bible is a free app, and it has little um, Bible study plans and little plans. To, for anxiety, if you're dealing with anxiety, depression, if you're dealing with depression, um, it's an awesome way to get some support and to get some hope. Um, so just kind of trying to fill your mind with really good things. Even if you're not um, feeling led to do anything spiritually, that's okay. Just for me, that's where I gain like all of my hope and my encouragement and my peace you know there's that lauren daigle song about peace that's been new out any kind of music that reminds me that i i am cared about and loved but i'm also not all that's going on you know i'm a small part of a bigger plan and even when i remember my ancestors you know my armenian fourth generation they had to flee for their lives um four generations ago so i mean we all of our backgrounds have stories of resiliency and hard times and i do believe that we're going to become out coming out of this strong and um hopefully more grateful and more um, you know we're going to grow and we're going to grow together and so my message to you is that you're not alone and there is a lot that you can do to help you stay in a non-panic place be careful what you're listening to follow all of the guidelines that uh, CDC and WHO put out. They're there for a reason. Um, if you need anything, please feel free to leave a comment down below or direct message me on Instagram. Hope this was helpful to you guys. Thank you so much. And remember that you do make a difference. You can make a difference. Um, and I just thank you so much for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.